Hi, today I'll show you how to make a switch mode power supply for use as a battery charger. With this you can charge a 12 volt 3 dozen battery or 3 series lithium ion batteries with a current of up to a maximum of about 10 amperes. So the circuit has an adjustable output voltage from about 3 to 15 volts and the current is maximum at 10 amperes at about 12 volts. The heart of the project is the UC3842 PWM IC. It's a very ideal IC for use in a flyback switch mode power supply because it can source or sink 1 amperes of current which makes it suitable for use without any additional gate drive IC so you can drive the output MOSFET directly from the IC. The overall circuit is as shown. The IC has 8 pins. Pin 1 is compensation, pin 2 is the feedback pin. 8 is the reference, it generates 5 volts for the IC's logical operations. Pin 4 is the RTCT, 5 is ground, pin 3 is current sense, 6 is the output to drive the output transistors and 7 is VCC. The AC should be powered by a minimum of 10 volts and I have designed that it will have a voltage supply of 15 volts. The input can be 110 or 220 volts. Here is a fuse, it's written for 7 amperes. The combination of the capacitor C5, C6 and this differential inductor make up an electromagnetic interference filter and this is suitable for isolating the high frequency generated by the pulsar prime from interfering with any means connected sensitive devices such as radios. BR1 is a bridge rectifier written for 8 amperes and at least 600 volts. RT1 is a negative thermal coefficient dummy stamp. And this will ensure that during startup, the initial current used to charge the bulk capacitor C3 is small and it will increase with time and this will reduce the stress on the bridge rectifier and prevent it from potentially getting burned out. R10 is a distant resistor for the capacitor C3, it's 3, 30 kilo ohms and half watts. The AC gets its power initially via R4 which is written for 56 kilo ohms and 2 watts. And the diode D1 is a Zener diode written for 15 volts and at least 2 watts. So here you have your 15 volts and the capacitor C2 and C9 will stabilize this voltage. C2 is 120 microfarads and at least 25 volts as well as C9. But C9 can be anywhere from 100 nanofarads to 1 microfarads and this must be a ceramic film capacitor. C2 is an electrolytic capacitor. The working of the circuit is very simple. I have designed that the IC will be switching at a frequency of about 80 kHz and the frequency formula is given by 1.72 or over RTCT. RT is 10 kilo ohms and CT is C1 which is 2.2 nanofarads. And putting this in the equation you will have a frequency of about 80 kHz. In the first stage you will have a high pass out of the output pin 6 and to the gate of the MOSFET Q1 via R5 which is 10 ohms and 1 watt. When this happens, the MOSFET will be forced to conduct and this will allow current to flow from the high voltage DC which is from the rectified mains through the primary winding, through the MOSFET Q1 and to the negative rail via the current sensing resistor R1 which is 0.2 ohms and 5 watts. When this happens, energy will begin building up in the core of the transformer in the form of a magnetic field. The diodes D2 and D3 in this first stage will be reverse biased and they will not conduct so there's no current flow to the output or to the auxiliary winding. If at any point the current flowing through R8 gets past 5 amperes, the voltage drop at this point will be 1 volts and this will trigger the IC and cause the output at pin 6 to get low. In the second stage, a low pass will be sent out of the output pin 6 and to the gate of the MOSFET Q1, forcing it to turn off very fast. When this happens, because current flow in the primary winding will be shut, all the energy stored in the core of the transformer will be converted to electrical energy and this will be in the reverse polarity and this will be induced in auxiliary and the secondary windings in the reverse polarity meaning that D3 and D2 now are found biased and they conduct. So current will flow in the auxiliary winding out of the D2 and R9 and to change the capacitor C2 and C9. This will stabilize the power supply to the IC. On the output side, Current will flow through the dream, through the inductor R1 and it will change the output capacitor C7, C8 and power any load connected. The combination of R1 and C7 and C8 is a simple filter and this will reduce the DC voltage ripple and ensure a steady DC output to power the load. C8 is 100 nanofarads and ceramic film, 
C7 is 2200 microfarads and electrolytic. Ensure that the inductile one can handle at least 10 amperes and it should be written at least 87 microhenries. It can be enough from 87 to 330 microhenries. The output diode D3 should be a high current diode and it should have a reverse breakdown voltage of at least 45. I have selected the MBR2100 which is rated for 20 amperes and 100 volts because it will work well in this case. Feedback regulation is by the means of the potentiometer R11, RV1 and R12 and the precision regulation I see TL431 as shown. Depending on the position of the middle terminal of the potentiometer RV1, if the output voltage rises to a point where you will have about 2.5 volts drop at this point, the ICTL431 will conduct and allow current to flow from the output through the resistor R13 through the internal LED of the optocopram through the IC and to ground as shown. When the internal LED of the optocopra turns on, its output transistor will be triggered and this will connect the compensation pin 1 of the IC to ground as shown and when this happens, the output at pin 6 will be completely disabled. This will prevent further buildup of voltage on the output signed as shown and this serves as voltage regulation for the output. The optocopra is the PC817, it's a good optocopram. You can optionally use the popular 4N35, it will also work well. The resistor R6 and the capacitor C4 is a simple RC filter and this will filter the current feedback to the sense pin 3 ensuring that it does not have accidental triggerings. R6 is 1 kilo ohms and C4 is 30 picofarans. The down D4, the capacitor C11 and the resistor R14 is a simple snubber network and this basically serves to protect the MOSFET from any voltage spikes generated across the primary winding, especially when the MOSFET turns off. When a voltage spike is generated across the primary winding, it will form bias the diode deform and it will change the output capacitor C11, which will be discharged by the resistor 14. Deform and D2 are FR107. These are fast recovery diodes suitable for high frequency operations. They are rated for 1 ampere and 1000 volts. R14 is 39 kilo ohms and at least 2 watts. Capacitor C11 is 10 nanofarads and at least 2 kilovolts. I forgot to mention that the capacitor C5 and C6 are written for 100 nanofarads and at least 400 volts AC. And ensure that the differential inductor can handle at least 5 amperes of current. For the transformer, it's a high frequency ferrite power transformer and the coil should be at least 1.4 cm squared to ensure that it can handle 150 watts without a problem in the fairback topology. The primary turns are 45, the auxiliary and the secondary are 5 turns each because they will be operating at almost 15 volts so they should be the same. For the primary winding, ensure that you use enameled copper wire of gauge 25. This is written for a frequency of 85 kilohertz and can handle about 2.7 amperes. So ensure that you parallel two of those to safely handle 5 amperes. The auxiliary winding is made up of American wire gauge 25 as well, but in this case one strand of wire is enough. For the output, because you'll be handling almost 10 amperes, ensure that you parallel at least 4 of those together, the same gauge. You can optionally use an operation amplifier such as the LM358 to regulate the output voltage and adjust the output current as well in case you want to have variable voltage and current. This will eliminate the use of the PC817 and the TL431 entirely, but you can also use the TL431 for more precision regulation. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if so, make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel, have a nice time, and I'll see you in the next video.